Nana says, we want to have a conversation about organized labor and their insistence that they still want to undertake uh, the demonstration or strike action following um, the announcement that we're going to have 15% uh, or VAT on electricity, as well as now they've decided to also add the emissions levy, et cetera. Guta has also uh, joined in the fray. They say they don't have any formal communique from government so far. Now, what does it mean? What are the implications? Is also going to mean that the country is going to grind to a halt. Do we need this? But what really is their concern? Do they have any concern at all? So we're going to have that conversation as well. And as you know, in the second part, uh, Tewu is also on strike. So we encourage you, uh, let's be part of this conversation. Do you agree with organized labor that they have to go on this uh, tangent? So we have the Member of Parliament for BWIM. Um, uh, uh, we have Mr. Adams joining us. Uh, Kofi Adams, good morning to you. Good morning. Hello. Great. And uh, we have uh, a Deputy Trade Minister who has joined us. He's a regular, well, well, he's a regular on the show, depends. Now, his schedules have kept him busy, particularly the last uh, two months because he was preparing for his uh, re-election as a parliamentary candidate for Inshire. So he's currently also the incumbent, the member of parliament for Inshire. So Deputy Trade Minister Stekas, we call him on a friendly basis, but Dr. Sivinamwa is here. Dr. Sivinamwa, good morning to you. Good morning. Well, great. If you've abandoned me. No, I have not. Been brothers, like how many years? I think now? it's been over 15 years. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. When you return from the UK, when you're doing you should abandon me. <laughs> we have a long story. You, you always loved using this phrase, asymmetry of information. Yes, and I picked yes, that from yes. you over 15 years ago. Oh, yeah, I always so loved it. When you did that chore science. Yeah, so my vocabulary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sevinamwa. I know it's going to be get, getting heated, etc. But it's part of the conversation. Let's get your message on this. This is what organized labor has been saying. <clears throat> uh, put 15% VAT on the electricity bill. It's prudent and think that you should officially communicate to organized labor. Mm -hmm. Then organized labor, you will use that communication to co reconvene its um, a meeting to actually discuss and take another decision. Because we said in our first communicate that the only thing we want is a total and unconditional withdrawal of the 15% VAT. Don't think so that we are sending fears. Uh, if there is any such, uh, you know, belief or perception, then it is rather the wrong approach of government that is uh, sending fears to the investors. We are going ahead with our action. If not, Thomas Musa Tanko and the president of UNAGRAT, Eric Angel Kabonu, said the Ghana Police Service has been petitioned. We are not engaging anybody. Today, the letter will reach the police. This week, we are in red. And then... Next week, Tuesday, 13th, all things being equal, we'll kickstart or we'll start rolling out our plans. Showing our displeasure and our anger at the fact that government is beginning to uh, down us with taxes unprecedented in the history of the... We are waiting silently by close of today to see whether... Um, any official communication will be released. And if we don't get anything by tomorrow, our letter to the employer will go. And we are setting out um, all the modalities to ensure that our members are released to participate fully in the national demonstrations. I mean, beyond Greater Accra, in all the other... And, and, and these are the health workers, registered nurses, etc. Um, since you are very much related to the corridors of power. These taxes that have been introduced, um, was the government envisaging that we're going to have massive pushback or reaction to these taxes? Um, thank you very much, my brother. And <laughs> I would like to use your platform to show my appreciation, mm. which is uh, very imminent. I mean, appreciation to uh, the great people of Inshayeso and all over Ghana, those who supported me financially spiritually, socially, and even voting-wise. Uh, I say God bless all of them. They've, they've done me a great deal of good, and I appreciate that. Uh, coming back to your question, I think uh, you and I know, uh, it is crystal clear that uh, any time there is introduction or increment of taxes, 
we have we did things to happen. Let's, I mean, when the NDC guys were in power and they wanted to introduce or increase taxes, MPP guys will probably sometimes hide behind or uh, start argument. Mm. I mean, some level of approval opposing, and opposition. then the public will follow. The same way when MPP guys in power uh, and want to introduce taxes or increase taxes, the NDC guys will start and the public will follow. Nowhere on this earth that people will want to outlay funds from their companies or their pockets. It's, it's a fact. It's a natural instinct. But for how long, my brother, should we continue this thing? Do we ask ourselves that do we really need to take taxes or not? What is the situation of our fiscal space today? If we don't take taxes, what happens? If we take taxes, what happens? What will be its, its resultant effect? Is it going to be adverse in the short term, medium term, long term on us as a people? People are calling for increment of salaries and allowances and all manner of needs. We have social needs, we have educational needs, we have infrastructural needs, we have developmental needs, we have health needs as a country. How do we finance them? Do we need taxes? So I think there should be a paradigm shift. We should come to the point that this recycling of MPP, NDC, opposing every good thing or bad thing because we want to come to power. In my opinion, anybody can do politics. I'm trying to have a shift personally. I know once a while I can come. But I'm trying to move myself from anything you have to defend, anything you have to do politics, and get to the point where all of us will have a new point of convergence. He said, no, enough of these things. Look, all the complaints, all the challenges, all the oppositions from former late uh, His Excellency J.J. Rollins, may he so rest in peace, throughout up to uh, Nanado's time. They are the same parameters, the same variables. I don't understand. This, what I'm saying is, when former president Maha, uh, Rollins was there, mm -hmm. the very things Ghanaians were complaining, maybe MPP in opposition, who were complaining. In terms of the variables, um, they are yes, the same. They are the same thing. So, the boss, do we continue this thing as a country? Or we should say that, let's pull the brakes. What is actually wrong? What do we want to attain? What is our focus? What is our long-term goal? Do we really want to build this country? Do we want to change this country for the good people of Ghana? Or we should continue to, because MPP, they want to stay in power, because NDC, they want to come to power, because probably business may want to make more profit, or is it because of what is it that we need to do? Now, all these about 40 years or 30 years of recycling of complaints and oppositions and propaganda and fighting and demonstrations that we, to me, which have not yielded any other results. Do we keep that status quo? We all have to change it. This is my pre present position. And I think people should join hands with me. There should be, we need to revolutionize our mindset. Dr. Seven Amwa, when, to when did that. you come to this realization? You know me from day one, unless you don't want to speak the truth. I'm no, the one, no, it, you know, if, if I st I'm starting today, no, is it, is it the no, right no. thing or not? Are you talking about as a person? No, I'm saying that if, if I'm starting today, mm. is what I'm saying making sense? And I'm Can asking this question Ghana? as a political grouping. Uh, as I'm a political is, grouping, yeah. um, the philosophy is that we want to move Ghana from excessive taxation mm -hmm. to one that is of production, for which when you are taxing as a result of the output, being the productive output, mm -hmm. then you can have the needed revenue or the citizens or the target group could have the needed revenue to be able to pay these taxes. Is that another philosophy? When did yes, it change? I'm coming. Let me, let me, what you are saying is 100% true. Thank I you. don't have to argue with you. Okay. I mean, unless I want to be dishonest. But let me ask you, the, that concept, that idea was perfect. That, okay, can we expand the frontiers of our industries? Can we expand our industries, do more productions, so that we can rather tax from production and that will not put too much burden on the individuals, which was perfect. But my brother, if you have a plan, if you have a program, and the program as a result of uncertainties, not going the way it's supposed to go, so you cannot make amendments and say that, okay, we wanted to go this way. Which, of course, I mean, industrialization, we are not there yet. Well, we are doing well under Nanado. At least we've done better than we took over. This is a fact unless you want to lie. In terms but of not, what? In terms of incrementing industries, factories. It's a fact. But one, one, I agree with anybody that will say that, oh, 
We still not there. They are not enough to employ other people. They are not enough to produce for us to stop importing. They are not enough to work so that we can do more production and export. That one I agree, because development is a process. But whilst doing that, what happened? We had a serious global crisis that impacted our fiscal space to the extent that we had about 22 months of impaired productivity in I don't Ghana. Understand. We are back to COVID, Russia, Ukraine. Ma master, I'm explaining things. You can decide to understand or not. At least I'm an expert in that area. Can you be patient, take away politics, and let me finish my explanation? Because what happened three years ago, two years, ten years ago, has still impacting us. You cannot say that it's, it's a process. You're talking about economy. That at a point in time, people were home, not working. And that created very bad fiscal space all over Ghana. Supply chain got bad. And we are gradually recovering and restructuring. And once you want to recover, we had our debt to GDP over 80%. How do, how do you work on a country whose debt to GDP? Who, had, who took us to the 80% debt to GDP? The situation at that time. Because we had revenue shortfalls of about 12 billion. Private sector had to stay home. We're not working. People were home. Government was paying them. So definitely generating money internally was a problem. So we resorted to debt financing because there were statutory demands. These are, it's like a doctor telling you this is what you need. This is my diagnosis. You say no. That way you can decide to do politics with it. But what I'm saying is that that situation, we haven't totally come out of Even the whole world, it's a fact. And one of the ways is to slow uh, uh, borrowing, not to stop at all, and try to increase domestic revenue generation. And that has to let, look, if we want to do politics, my brother, between 2014, 2015, 2016, tax items that were increased or introduced were about 26 taxes. Those were the days we were having condom tax, we were having KIU, we were having real estate, we were having medicines imported, but not produced. They were there. And well, you complained about yes. it. Yes. Oh, yes. Perfect. And, and we're back to... So I'm coming. And even more. So that is one. No more. Check the taxes. Go and check whether even under Leonardo we have 26. It's no Existing more. taxes but, have been increased by way of the quantum. Yeah, but by percentages. it's not increased. But How do not, you term that? What I'm saying, that's what Let's I'm, say you have an existing you, tax. You know the point because I was you, making. You've been educated. You, it's because of you. That's why I went to <laughs> business school. You encouraged me when you came. So you understand the yeah, point Yeah, so, 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 please. So, 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 you, and I, so, I yes, so you and I are on, on so, a certain level so when my, it comes to that. my point that I was making yes, please. was that, yes, MPP complained, mm -hmm. which I agree with you. Mm -hmm. NDC will complain. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that, should we continue that cycle? That is my point. No, we should not. Exactly. Oh. But I'm, I'm, I'm asking you that, so, is, it not, is it not an issue of a lack of candor and trust and a lack of self-admission? that if we have Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, for example, having the clarion call, being the principle, by way of economic principle and ideology, that, that, that we need to move the country from taxation to production. And well, was we, it a good idea or not? It's a positive idea. It's exactly. the reason why in 2016, alongside exactly. the president, he was voted for massively one million, one million votes. Thank you. Or nearly one million votes. Do you understand what is called uncertainty? Do you understand unexpected circumstances and events? Force majeure, yes. It can happen. So that even the things you want to do as, a, as an individual, sometimes you plan doing A, B, C, D by the end of the year. Let's be honest. Circumstances can let you do even otherwise, more or less or not do at all. We were in this But you told me that as a good economist and a planner, <laughs> as far as foreseeable making projections, you make projections and room for force majeure. Rooms, but when... Whoever so we didn't make room no, no, for force No, 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 we are not talking about that. But you can make room for anything. But if tomorrow something happened, something happens, and the whole world, they are not bringing any food to Ghana. They are not bringing any medicine. Nothing happens. You can't even move from your house to another house. What happens? Something you don't expect. It happens. But what I'm saying is that, in fact, everything you are raising this morning, I agree with you or to what you're saying. But the point I'm making is that, my brother, should we continue this issue of recycling of MPP, NDC, because MPP wants to stay in power. NDC wants to come to power because A wants to do this. Somebody has parochial or individual interest. I am asking, and I'm saying that there should be a paradigm shift. Whether somebody was wrong or right or would be wrong or whatever, I think as an individual, it hasn't really offered the preferred solution. It has not provided the expected utilities. So do we stay in that and destroy Ghana? No. All of us, Kofi, my brother here, you, Key, 
relevant stakeholder. I, I'm, I'm also your brother, Myself, right? yes. Uh, you, I've been using brother for you. You know that on the, the same platform. So what I'm trying to say is that as a country, whether party A or B, whether individual A or B, we can do something about this whole issue of everyday straight politics because I want to be in this position and say that no, we did this against NDC. We did this against MPP. We made this statement. We tried to do this. Can we pull brakes on the brakes and then find a new way of building a society that will grow, that will be sustainable, that will provide sustainable jobs, that will stop this whole issue about cities, that will stop this whole issue about streetism, that will stop this whole issue of importing everything. Yes, this is where I want to so, come by. Okay. If people will do politics, they want to do it. No, I want to so see. So you're saying change. enough of the politics. Let's yes. let's be nationalistic. I'm not saying politics is important, okay. but constructive. Mr. Politics. Kofi Adams. 